Hello and welcome back to Rheumatology for Medical Student and Intern. Today our special guest is still Jackie with us. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Chen. So what case are we going to learn about today, Jackie? Yeah, so today we saw a 70-year-old female and she presented to us after having a DEXA scan five years ago and she was concerned about her bone density. She has been taking calcium and vitamin D. Mm -hmm. um, she's healthy and no history of fractures. Um, and she also does not smoke or use alcohol. Um, she does have a family history of a mother who had a hip fracture when she was 90 years old. Uh, her DEXA scan, um, after we sent her for one, uh, came back and it was an L1 to L4 of minus 2.2 and mm -hmm. a right femoral neck of minus 2.5. 245. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yep. uh, so we were able to make the diagnosis of osteoporosis. So we make a diagnosis based on many factors, right? Not just the DEXA, but history. And now we found DEXA minus. So what, how do we diagnose it? Um, so for this patient, um, we were able to make the diagnosis partially based off of her DEXA scan. Mm -hmm. So the DEXA scan uses a T-score um, and compares the patient's bone mineral density to that of a 30-year-old which has peak bone mineral density. So for osteoporosis, it's a T-score of minus 2.5. Um, for osteopenia, which is kind of like pre-osteoporosis, um, it's minus 1 to minus 2.4. And for um, patients that are normal, it's anything greater than minus 1. I see. Now, you learned this from medical school, internship and residency, those are the numbers. So let me ask you this, how you connect or relate also process and then fracture because that's is what our concern the number one thing we concern for people with osteoporosis is the risk of fall and if they fall they may fracture so how do you measure that yeah so there is a tool that is used to measure the patient's 10-year risk mm. and it's called the frax tool um, and this is able to help kind of see if the patient is at risk of falling and then also discussing with the patient and having patient education on how to minimize their risk of falling and also making some modifications to their house to help prevent falls. Excellent. So this is the key thing about osteoporosis. We try to prevent fall and fracture. Mm -hmm. A lot of time we try to chase a number and say, hey, that minus 2.5, uh, I try to make it less than 2.5, 2.4. So she not osteoporosis, right? <laughs> no, that's not what we mm -hmm. want. We want to evaluate patient as a whole person, not just DEXA scan to see if this lady her risk of fracture in the next couple years is how much and then what else we can intervene before she fell and she broke her hip right we all know this if the patient fall and then they have fracture that risk of dying in the next couple years is very high that's we don't want that and that's the whole purpose of osteoporosis treatment to mm -hmm. prevent fall and fracture it's not make the number look nice. What well, we want that too, right, Jackie? We want to see, for example, today patient minus 2.5, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully, when we treat her, she's still minus 2.5 or even better, minus 2.0. We don't want to see from minus 2.5 to minus 3.5, right? So let's talk about, um, you talked about diagnosis already. Mm -hmm. How do we treat osteoporosis? So the treatment for osteoporosis involves several things, um, including adequate vitamin C and vitamin D intake, adequate exercise, um, fall prevention like we just talked about. Um, and then also our patient, although she wasn't a smoker, for those who smoke, smoking cessation and also. Yep, smoking and osteoporosis, they don't like each other. So no, do not, do not put them together. And one of the best way I told my patient like you saw today is if you simply quit smoking, your bone health will improve dramatically. So instead of keep smoking and try to take medication to prevent, you just tell your patient, hey, if we can quit smoking, that can make a big difference. Basic intervention like smoking cessations will make a big difference in patients with osteoporosis. Now you talk about um, treatment, medication. Uh, let's go further, like what medication that you think we can use for our patient today? Yeah, so there's several different types of medications that patients can use, um, but first a little bit of background about bone health. So there's two types of cells, osteoclasts mm -hmm. and osteoblasts. Mm -hmm. So osteoclasts are important for remodeling the bone and they resorb part of the bone. Osteoblasts are important for building new bone. 
Mm -hmm. And so the types of treatment kind of work on these two, two ideas. Um, so there's anti-resorptive, which stop the osteoclast from increasing the remodeling of the bone, and then also um, anabolic, but not <laughs> anabolic steroids <laughs> here. We're thinking anabolic as in building up the bone. So these help the osteoblast to increase bone growth. Exactly. The way that I tell, I'm telling my patient very simple, you have two types of cells. One, destroy the bone. The other one, build the bone. Mm -hmm. Just like one, you make okay. money, the other one, spending money. <laughs> if you make too much money and you don't spend, you, you rich, you have money, right? If you make too little and you spend too much, then you have little money or you have osteoporosis. That's what I'm telling my patient. Now, um, when you talk about those particular treatment, how do you tell your patient about taking vitamin D and calcium? What's the best resource for them? Yeah, so for intake for calcium, um, low-fat dairy is a great resource. Um, and then also for vitamin D, um, fatty fish or also um, fortified milk and also fortified cereals. Um, for patients that are on a, a proton pump inhibitor, they may need to take supplemental calcium because the proton pump inhibitor inhibits the gastric acid, which is needed for calcium absorption. And so um, they will need to take calcium citrate, which doesn't need the acid from the stomach to be absorbed. And this will help increase their calcium level. That's very true. Um, that's why today we ask a patient about any stomach pain, any upset stomach after eating. A lot of time we forget to ask about their diet, but diet play a big role in preventing osteoporosis. Like Jackie did a fabulous job today. You really pay attention to the diet, ask about stomach problem, and taking those PPI, like you just said, may increase risk. And put them together, we find what's the best way to treat our patient. Um, any question for me? Yeah, um, so are there any differences when it comes to men and women in osteoporosis? Yes, uh, women in general likely to have osteoporosis sooner than men, but that doesn't mean men cannot have osteoporosis. This is a, sometimes as a misconception because men sometimes don't think they may have osteoporosis. In fact, they, yes, they can have just like women. So for women in general, we start screening by doing DEXA scan by age 65. But for men, we do 70 to 75, so a couple of years later. And obviously, uh, osteoporosis may relate to menopause, so that's also another risk factor for women. However, the message is both men and women can have osteoporosis. Is there anything that people can do to prevent osteoporosis? Oh yes, um, one very basic thing that I am often telling my patient is exercise and uh, do not gain weight. Basically, general like healthy lifestyle. Do not smoke. You just heard about <laughs> our patient. Why? Because when we exercise, we keep our bone health intact. Remember when we exercise, blood flow to the joint and everything. So keep regular exercise is one of the key things to keep your bone health. In addition to good balanced diet. I'm saying balanced diet, that means you should have multi, not just one thing. <laughs> and then do not gain weight. Uh, we try to uh, keep our patient active because the more we gain, especially in obesity or very high heavy weight patient, they put too much pressure on their body. And you see from the structure, the backbone already asymmetric. It's not in the center of the body, right? in the <laughs> back. That's what we call backbone. Because of that, any way you put in the abdomen area will make additional throat or make it likely a higher risk of fracture in the back if the patient has osteoporosis. So those are the basic prevention that you can do every day to lower your risk of osteoporosis. Anything else? What about uh, swimming? Would that be a good exercise for patients? Yes. Any type of exercise may be a good one, depends on circumstances, but in general, when you swim uh, and then you walk, you come by, uh, that would be better. Um, usually I tell my patient, try many exercise if you can, uh, because every exercise certainly will bring certain benefits. Now, let me ask you about treatments, because I think this is a, could be a tricky question for medical student. Mm -hmm. But Jackie is way too smart, and she, in fact, she's a doctor, so she, could tell you the answer. 
So when you talk about treatment, what is the difference between reclass and prolia? So prolia or denosumab is a monoclonal antibody and it works by binding to rank ligand mm -hmm. and rank ligand stimulates osteoclasts which as I, we mentioned earlier were for remodeling of the bones. The other drug which is reclassed which is a type of bisphosphonate mm -hmm. works by binding to the bone and then when the osteoclasts try to remodel they'll bind to the bisphosphonate instead of the actual bone. I see. So both reclass and prolia by working, they basically block the bone destruction, right? So both of them, but in different way. And we also give them, for example, prolia we inject every six months, versus reclass we infuse, we go to IV line um, every year. The reason why, because some people, they cannot take uh, by phosphonate by mouth. Have you ever taken one, Alentrone? <laughs> no. Well, um, actually, I tried to taste it, and I will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cool. Alentronate is a difficult drug to take. You have to take the drug while you an empty stomach left first thing in the morning. You have no thing there. You take it and you have to sit upright like this. And you keep for several minutes. You know why? Because you want to have the maximum the absorption into your body. What if some patient they have GI problem, they cannot absorb like the way we wish to, then whatever drug we take won't work, right? Go back to basic uh, pharmacology. How good a drug depends on how much a drug can absorb into your body. It doesn't matter how nice the drug look or the name sounds to be, but it, what matter is how much, what percentage the drug can get into your body, right? Right. Because that will make a difference. So alentronate is a nice story of difficult absorption and requires certain um, way to take the medication. And because of that, many patients feel for prolia or reclass. Anything else? Do, are there any future treatments that are being developed right now? Yes. So we are working on many ways. Um, when I say we, when I say Dr. Santos and everyone, uh, we try to see what else we learn about osteoporosis. And beside those bone destruction blocking, we try to promote bone builder. Um, so try to make more money if you can <laughs> because you're losing money anyway when we're aging. So those are the future treatment and we work particularly into the pathway at cellular level. So that's why I'm telling students like you are going to rheumatology and immunology because I believe in the future we focus a lot on uh, DNA, genetics, cellular level because this is how we learn about disease and hopefully uh, someday we can make a cure of those conditions. Anything else, Jackie? Nope, I think those are all the questions I have for today. Thank you everyone and welcome to Rheumatology for medical student and intern. <laughs>